Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Make sure you visit holybatcast.com and find us all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast and you will find us. If you love the show, you want to help support the show, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And as always, a big thank you to our patrons. We do appreciate you. And we did get a new one. We have Cody, who just joined us as a patron. So thanks, Cody. Welcome to the family, and we certainly do appreciate that. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network. You can check out all the shows that are part of the network at rf4rm.com. And as always, I'm your host, Andy DiGenova. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. This episode, we have a very special guest. We are going to be speaking to Damon Caro, the stunt coordinator and second unit director for many of the DC films and uh, pretty much all of Zack Snyder's films. So we're very excited to speak to Damon. But unfortunately, my normal co-hosts could not join. Brendan is very busy right now with his new baby boy, which is a great excuse. We understand it. And uh, Jamie just had other responsibilities. And so I had to figure out who could join and be a special guest co-host for this conversation. And so I brought in a friend of the show, someone who actually connected us with Damon uh, and who has been awesome. You've heard him before and you love him. It's stunt Batman himself, Mr. Richard Citrone. Hey, Richard. Hey, Andy. It's, it's good to be back. And wow, I have some big shoes to fill. <laughs> I mean, with Jamie, literally, big shoes. He's he is a very large man. I believe in you, and I, I know that if anyone had to step into their shoes, they're not going to be mad that it's you. They both send their best. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for making the time, getting up early, and getting through uh, some some <laughs> technical difficulties this morning. Um, but anyway, let's welcome Damon. Hey, Damon, and thank you as well for your patience and for making time. We're super excited to have you on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I kind of feel like we've all upped our level in technical uh, <laughs> solutions this morning. I, I don't know. <laughs> How, how well we have succeeded, but uh, we'll see. I guess when you, when you play this back, you'll find out. We'll find out. I mean, I guess that bonds us, right, as a unit, is having to go through stuff like this. Indeed, indeed. As small as it may seem, I do feel closer to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, and no, Damon, it really, uh, I'm so glad we got a, a chance to talk to you. And uh I guess, well, first of all, let me, let me tell the listeners in case they don't feel like Googling you themselves, uh, just a little bit of your resume. Um, look in here, you've been doing stunt work for, oh my gosh, over 20 years? Gosh, starting yeah, close with- Close to 30, starting, Rich and I both. Oh my gosh, close to 30. Yeah. yeah. Wow, so some, some things here, just, I mean, just some highlights, because it's a very long resume, but um, Escape from LA, and Ghosts of Mars, me and Richard have talked about our mutual love of John Carpenter before. I think it's so cool that you are also part of the family. Yeah, huge Carpenter fan since, uh, boy, I think Halloween is obviously the first thing I saw that I remember. Um, and then, you know, I've seen all of his films, but a huge Carpenter fan. He's, he's done some amazing work and uh, very yeah. inspirational. Yeah, he's, he's the best. So, um, Daredevil... So working with starting with Ben Affleck, then uh, Birds of Prey, the television series. Uh, and then, yeah, like, again, all the Zack Snyder films, starting with Dawn of the Dead, uh, a couple of the Bourne films, Bourne Ultimatum here, Angels and Demons, Watchmen, Sucker Punch, um, even worked on Legend of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahul. So stunt coordinating owl fights, which is great. Um, Man of Steel. Batman vs. Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and then, of course, Army of the Dead. So it's a heck of a filmography, so congratulations on 30 years. Um, before we get into your career itself, though, I want to know just, like, are, were you already a DC fan? Were you a Batman fan? Do you have a favorite Batman movie? I know you might be biased in that, but that's okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I collected comic books as a child, 
I had uh, I didn't continue it as I grew older, but I I never lost my love for the genre and and, and love for the characters. So I love DC and Marvel. Quite frankly, uh, I, I didn't have a bias either way. You know, some people get very uh, religious about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, that was not the case for me. I I liked uh, characters and uh, I loved superheroes and. Uh, you know, I used to draw when I was younger, and I, I used to do actually these. My brother and I would draw these posters, and they would be DC versus Marvel, and we would just always pair up. You know, who would the Hulk fight in DC, and who would Batman fight in Marvel? And it was always this awesome, just phalanx line we would draw. And uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen now because of the two different uh, companies that own. <laughs> the material but uh yeah huge fan never never lost that and so once i started to work on some superhero movies uh in the business uh i was very passionate about it and, and I'm, I'm passionate about the business in general and, and whatever i i do but uh the original donner superman was um was really uh inspirational to me and that was an honor to be able to work on the, the sequel man of steel so circling back to your question, yeah, I've been a Batman fan since a child, and I believe you asked me what was my favorite Batman movie. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's it's sort of a tradition of any any anyone's first appearance on the show has to tell us their favorite Batman movie and why. Wow, uh, that's a hard one. I really, I did like uh, Tim Burton's first Batman with Keaton. I, I really, that that's something that brought it to another level from the Adam West of, of my day. <laughs> um, but I would have to go with Batman versus Superman just because, you know, Zack Snyder's amazing and we got to tailorize the Batman that we wanted to see. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little biased there in, in, in that decision. I, I would understand that. And you got to work with the real Batman, Richard. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, so when did the two of you first uh, work together? Did you meet through Zack Snyder or did it all just kind of, yeah, how did that work out? Uh, no, we met, uh, Rich and I met at, um, at the Inosanto Academy, Dan Inosanto, Guru Dan Inosanto's uh, martial arts school in Marina del Rey, California. Uh, it's called the Inosanto Academy of Martial Arts, and um, Guy Rich was it eighty seven or eighty eight? I think it was the tail end of eighty seven. Yeah, it was a it was many moons ago. It was a while ago. So I, yeah, I, I must have been a teenager still, and Rich was a teenager in, a, in two years or something. But uh, <laughs> uh, we met training. And we started working out in class together. And Rich, please correct me if I'm, if you're remembering it differently than myself. But there was one time in particular where um, we were, we'd get out of class late, 10 at night, and uh, sometimes 11, sometimes we'd stay for a couple hours, even work out more. And, and it, it was a late evening, a lot of the cars were gone. And it was kind of in an alley in office warehouses. And uh, I'm getting ready to leave. And I see Rich kind of looking around standing there and there's no vehicle for him and i go hey uh rich what are you doing are you okay and he goes well he goes my wife's supposed to pick me up but i think she fell asleep <laughs> and i go oh and this was pre-cell phones obviously um mm -hmm. so and then he goes hey you you live in the south bay right and, and, uh, and i said yeah i do uh, so anyways i said I'd be happy to so we I, t I gave him a ride home, and uh, we were, uh, you know, we'd worked out, but we hadn't really talked about other interests, and we did. We, we started to find out that we shared a lot of common interests, and getting into the film business was, was one of them. So we, I still bring this up to Rich, that I remember sitting at a red light. I remember the specific street in 87 or 88, whenever that was, and I didn't know a soul in the business, neither did he. So... You know, we had a hard road to try and crack, you know, to get into that, to the, to the business, of course. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, he said, man, he goes, it would be great someday if, you know, you could get in the business, I could get in the business and we could work together. That'd be awesome. 
<laughs> Lo and behold, you know, we've been able to do that for decades. And, you know, every time, even as, as recent as Army of the Dead, when we were in the, uh, on that show in 2019, I, I always remind him of that memory. And so we can never forget to cherish the moment of how we actually were able to do what we wished could happen. And, you know, we've done it so many times and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's like a brother to me and he happens to be super talented. So I hire him every chance I can. Oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I, I, you know, that I, oddly enough, I'm not married to that woman anymore, but I, I, I thank her every chance I get because that really was the beginning. Like we had worked out and trained together before, so we kind of knew each other, but we didn't know each other you know, on, on another level. And that was kind of the beginning of that, you know, so that was, um, that was really cool. You know, so I, I do, I have thanked her for that in the, in the past. <laughs> I never looked at it that way. That's true. I guess I have to thank her too. That's great. I guess it worked, it worked out the way it was supposed to. <laughs> Indeed. So, so is that how it worked is, um, like, did one of you kind of get the break first and then you hired the other or, or did you both just start your career sort of in parallel and eventually they met again somewhere down the road? We, we pretty much all rose together. Um, what we started doing was I had, when I was nine or 10, I, I found my parents' Super 8 camera and uh, we loved cinema. And so I started making Super 8 movies and editing them and, Back then you had to, the only really fancy camera had sound, so you had to use like an audio cassette tape and then play the audio alongside the playing the Super 8. And you know, that was all <laughs> old splicing, no, nothing on computer. You know, it sounds like times of the dinosaurs. So I had <laughs> made a zombie movie. I had made a sword fighting movie. I had made um, a sci-fi movie and liked film and had worked on a friend of mine's uh, student films. He went to SE uh, film school. And, but when Rich and I met, it was kind of that period where it was really getting fascinating to me and I, I wanted to pursue the business and as did he. So we started, uh, he had a, what was the camera you had, Rich? It was a VHS, I don't remember, was it a Panasonic or Sony? It was the back of the, the giant ones that you used to have to put yeah. on the shoulder. Yeah, the one where you'd, you'd put the giant VHS tape directly yes. into the camera. <laughs> but he had one because all of our Super 8 cameras had died at that point. But, um, and so it was perfect. So we said, hey, we want to start, um, let's start getting together and just choreographing some things and trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to, how to do movie fights better. And like I said, I had done a little in my friend's. Um, in my own Super 8 stuff and my friend's student films, but we wanted to expand upon that and just get better in all areas. And not only fights, we started to do, you know, uh, everything that would prepare us to get into stunt work. So, uh, but that was really a special time. And there were some other people who got in the business along with us who um, joined us during that time. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, I look back with uh, fond memories. Awesome. And so who, uh, who started working with Zack Snyder first? I did. I met Zach through a mutual friend. It's funny. I just did a uh, interview with Zach for uh, Army of the Dead. He's Zach's doing a uh, master class for YouTube, I think. So we, oh, we we're nice. just talking about this. Oh, but, nice. I uh, just did it last Friday. But uh, we have a mutual, Zach and I have a mutual friend, uh, a gentleman by the name of Kurt Johnstad, who um, is an amazing writer. He wrote co-wrote Three Hundred with Zach and. Um, along with many other projects and, you know, super talented, uh, amazing writer. Um, but back at that time, Kurt and I were friends and I think Rich, you probably met Kurt by then. I think, so I think Kurt, Kurt knew Rich as well, but Rich, he, we climbed with him. He's a really good rock climber. And, um, uh, and he said, Hey, I've been working with this guy. He was a dolly grip anyways, working with, for Zach back then. And he goes, I, I met this director, you know, and you guys should hook up because you guys are similar and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. So I met Zach on a Super Bowl shot, uh, job he was doing, uh, commercials back then. I was, this was 96, actually. So, you know, I was in features and he was doing commercials. And 
and then uh, he wanted to train martial arts a little bit and Zach had a background in martial arts and uh, was very gifted uh, physically um, so we trained a little bit and similar to Rich and myself we started to find out we had a lot of common interest um, in many areas uh, and especially in sort of the genres in the film in cinema and, and uh, became uh, close and we said hey it'd be cool if I you know Zach was like if you know if I ever when I start doing features it'd be awesome if we could work together and I go yeah it'd be amazing blah 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 and the rest is history wow so yeah I mean it, it, you were with him from his first feature which was Dawn of the Dead correct yeah and and yeah so I had met him seven years prior and yeah we met I did a few of his commercials he had um he did a lot of car commercials back in the day, and he had a gentleman who's um, really talented, who's unfortunately passed on now, but um, Tom Fickey, who is an amazing stuntman, an amazing uh, stunt coordinator um, that he used a lot. And then I did a few jobs that were um, of his commercials, but then, uh, yeah, the first feature, I was on Dawn of the Dead with him, yeah, and had wow. done everything since. Wow. Very cool. And so, I mean, honestly, even very early on in in his feature career, he was already doing comic book movies. I mean, 300 was was a comic book movie and then Watchmen and then On Demand of Steel. So as you guys started, you know, building these these DC stories on film, um, tell me a little bit about, I guess, that, that creative process. How did it look from, from an action standpoint? Um, yeah, because, you know, I know that you work very closely on all that and then you, you you became the second unit director for a lot of these films yeah so do you want me to start with a particular project uh i mean we can start with watchmen i guess because it's the most i guess it, it's it's the it was the biggest jump into the dc world 300 counts but yeah let's start with watchmen otherwise we'll be here all night i'll pick your brain about every single one and well for me it'll be all <laughs> night for you it'll be all day <laughs> right well, Watchmen specifically is Zach was a is a huge Watchmen fan, and, and as a you know as a teenager, I believe. Um, so he that was very close to his heart that project. You know, I liked Frank Miller. Um, I wasn't as into Watchmen as I was to Dark, you know, Frank Miller's Dark Knight, etc. But I obviously respected the material, and I think it's amazing. Um, so he did a lot of boarding. Uh, as he as he tries to do so for the action we generally if he has a specific shot he wants in he'll board that but we generally try and do uh, stunt biz and, and do shoot the scene so he and I will always meet we'll discuss the tone um, and you know I, I always I've said this many times before but I always approach action through story and character rather than to create moves for the sake of moves or actions for the sake of action so that helps guide me and really it just choreographs itself in my opinion if i'm mm -hmm. always staying true to the story and the character it's just uh, it's it's no different than, than trying to act in a scene or direct a scene and you have to just let the story and the characters play out that's all you have to do is get out of the way of that mm -hmm. so that was interesting because we had done 300 with this sort of really amazing style and, and it was being so well received and then Watchmen we had different uh, decades we would we were traveling through right there were 70s 80s there were some 60s but a lot of the action took place in the 80s and the 70s so the design purposely was to not make it look like a modern action film and so you know wanted to really get a retro feel with the action for that movie so you'll find that maybe the prison battle has you know I, again I didn't try and use a lot of tricks there we just tried to make it feel like it was of the time period um, mm. probably the most I say well received uh, was the opening comedian sequence Mm -hmm. um, comedian when Richard fight, when Richard was, killed someone Richard yeah. killed someone yeah I mean, that where Richard is doubling uh, <laughs> doubling the, the bad guy let's say but uh, that was uh, that was really fun to do we shot a little viz for it and Zach had some boards and it was a nice 
collaboration and uh, you know that's something that I really like the feel of that fight and it has great energy and and uh, and have to this day get many many compliments on on that uh, opening sequence you know you know too awesome. Andy when, when you hear I'm sorry I was just gonna mention when you hear Damon talk about you know his relationship and how he works with Zach and uh, you know, you y- you get to notice that it's not your typical stunt coordinator, second unit director relationship with the director. Um, it's much more than that. Damon is truly part of Zach's inner circle and and a confidant as well. Like he, mm-hmm. you know, he looks to Damon a lot for for you know advice on different things. Of course, he knows exactly what he wants. Of course, but. He values Damon's opinion and he values, you know, his experience. And so it, it is much more than your typical, you know, director, stunt coordinator relationship. And, and, and I think you'll, the listeners will start to get the impression of that as, as we go on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you kind of had mentioned that uh, prior to, uh, you know, to, to us setting this up, which I do want to hear about. I want to hear about that collaboration and, and you know how involved you are Damon and you know in the story and and weaving in you know your aspects but then still being you know that collaborator with Zach as you put the film together well I'll just make it clear he doesn't need me (laughs) he's a he's a he's a genius in in so many ways but um, because I've had the honor of, of being part of of his journey and on all of his projects and, and again, we have a we have a friendship as well that it'll depend project to project. But uh, you know, many times when he's developing a story, he'll bounce a couple things off me. I'm not you know I don't want to overstate this that <laughs> I'm in on every every page of every. But you know, he might come into a come up to to a, an, a certain scene and he's like, "Hey, I want to run something by you. What do you think of this versus that?" And you know, we chat about that or. You know, he'll ask my opinion about various stages like that. And then uh, many times when the script's done and and he gets it out, he'll he'll ask uh, for my feedback and or notes. Um, I may have a few. I may have some in my opinion. And if, if they make sense to him, he will incorporate them. If they don't, um, he doesn't. And, um, and then in the process of, again, creating the action and, and the ensuring that it does parallel the story and the characters we we start very early in that process so we are designing by literally just a conversation and doing a skeleton of the whole the whole film and each action beat and make sure the tone and the flavor is right and and figure out the shooting styles we want to have to convey the truth of that scene and that action sequence and it's a it's a process that goes on and on. And uh, you know, I, I had I had shot splinter units for Zach prior to actually getting the official second unit on Man of Steel. So um, that was really fun, and and was honored to do it. And uh, you know, it just came, became official on Man of Steel. But you know, I I had shot things for for him prior to that as well. Awesome. And speaking of Man of Steel, since uh, you brought it up, I mean, I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And it came at a time when I I and so many fans, we were just hungry for a really fresh new Superman film. And also to, to see a Superman on film like we had always dreamt of that we had never really gotten a chance to before. And I feel like Man of Steel really delivers that in, you know, all over the place. And specifically, I mean... There's a lot of great Superman stuff in that film, but I remember that third trailer, and there's that moment where Superman is flying and punching Zod while he's flying, and it's become like one of the most iconic moments in the film. And so I guess, I mean, we can talk about that moment, but also just how did you all approach going, hey, like we can do a Superman like has never been seen before, and then how did that, you know, how did you build the action sequences around that? Hmm. Well, you know, funny story before I get into the action sequences. Um, we were doing Guardians, getting ready to go up to do Sucker Punch. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Superman had come across his 
radar then. Um, I think Warner's had sort of said, hey, we want to we wanna, uh, do a reboot of this. But he had Guardians going, and it was just about to, we were about to go begin Sucker Punch. So he didn't have the opening for it, and he was talking to me about it. And I went, you know, I go, I'd really like to do a Superman movie because I was such a fan of the Donner um, version and Superman as a character. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I know, but you know, we'd just be doing Watchmen right now if we weren't, you know, I'm like, okay, okay. So I didn't think it was going to happen for him. As it turned out, it all did. And, um, it, you know, it, luckily. But when I, when he got that job, uh, we talked, we discussed, obviously, super excited, um, amazed uh, to, uh, to get on that project. Uh, we broke down, you know, it's so easy to just go nuts with, um, superhero movies <laughs> and his whole idea was to keep this grounded and make it more real world a superhero in the real world which was phenomenal and mm-hmm. uh, so we were very specific about creating laws of specifically on damage mm-hmm. because it's so easy again in the superhero world to go oh well there's the powers are inconsistent or what hurts them is inconsistent etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know, Zach basically he does a lot of work on the whiteboard, and, and we started to draw out like, okay, if we're talking about the Battle of Smallville, and we're talking, let's see what what is a you know what does a nine millimeter round do to the Kryptonians? What does a you know that's like a gnat? You know, what is a mm-hmm. three hundred eight round? Oh, that's more like getting hit by a golf ball. You know, what is a you know a fifty cal? That's like getting hit by a softball. You know, that that sort of thing. What is an explosion? What so just to to make these templates to make sure we're always referencing them and staying grounded and not violating the rules of this movie the rules of this world we're creating so that's mm-hmm. important mm-hmm. so you don't just go you know crazy and and you know, cuz there's nothing and i've said this a bunch of times before too i don't like mindless action it really just desensitizes me and i lose interest um, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you have to really be focused on how you present it in my opinion and make mm-hmm. sure it has a foundation that stays um, consistent through the project through the pro- through the film um, so that was very very important and then it was the design of how how he wanted to shoot it he wanted to shoot it um, you know very different like he said literally he goes I'm going to have one he goes the only the only high speed shots in this movie are going to be maybe of his cape, a little cape flare, and you know maybe one or two other little things. But he didn't want to employ it into the action, so I was like, okay, cool, that sounds fun. And then it was proof of concept of how do we mesh live action actors and actresses with the digital takeovers. And then we had worked with um, DJ, who had. Started with us on Watchmen and and did Sucker Punch and then went on the Man of Steel with us and so he was it's such a great great collaborator with us so we would always we did a test of his effects and stunt test for proof of concept of how we were going to make these digi handoffs back to live action real mm. because it's really important to you know especially early on CG people were so liberal in the way they used it that yeah. it would just yeah. you feel that it turns into a cartoon character okay 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 oh now we're back to a close up on a human I'm, I'm sort of I'm emotionally um, reconnected with this and um, we didn't want that we want to make sure that we we do everything in our power we, we know we're going to have to create CG characters and we're going to have stitches and hands offs back and forth but how do we make them feel as real as possible and how do we make that hand off switching between digi to live action and vice versa real so we did a lot of work in uh, figuring these concepts out and we did a great test shot before we left la uh, to uh, basically prove the concept and we were very happy with it and that's when also dj started to do what's called performance capture which is these uh, suits censored suits but it's just videoed uh, it's not uh, mocap, which is sensor driven through a computer, mm-hmm. it's video capture. So, mm-hmm. basically, all the motions we would we would still do, even if it was going to be enhanced by um, the VisFX artist. So they would have a human skeleton to base everything on, and a and a human performance to base all of their designs on, uh, and, and that's the hope. The hope is to keep that human feel. 
mm-hmm. as long as possible. Mm-hmm. One more thing I do want to say, you talked about that shot um, in the Superman Zod battle. It's sort of tra- camera trails Henry uh, as he's mm-hmm. punching mm-hmm. Zod and launching him you know, several times. And it was so funny because we were trying to figure that out. It was down to the wire. That was that was a tricky fight to figure out. And of course, it was the, one of the last things we did. So we were getting tight on time, trying to figure out how to shoot it. And I think I was on a weekend down with the crew trying to do some R&D and still figuring out how we're going to capture these shots. And we were trying rigs, um, you know, wire rigs on winch systems that were flying people around. It's just like, God, how are we going to get this shot? I couldn't figure it out. Nothing was working. And then I literally went back to, and that's what was amazing about, especially that Zod Superman battle, is we employed so many techniques from modern technology to old school, just literally when I was making Super 8 camera uh, movies when I was 10. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm trying to figure out how to do this shot. And then I go, wait a minute. I, uh, and I had the double, I think it was Paul Darnell. I go, I got him on a little raised platform. I go, go stand on this. And it was tight enough to where I could get the camera. And I was using our test camera. I go, okay, throw your right hand, elbow higher. And I'm just looking up vertically, right? So if we put a mm-hmm. green screen up mm-hmm. above. And now I can move because we wanted that handheld field still in the air, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't want it to feel like this is smooth move. So we made this tight, tight little platform for him. And so I could get the camera, get punched, whip to the other side, he punches again. And, you know, just put a guy looking vertically up, put the camera below him. That's how we ended up shooting that shot with Henry. <laughs> and then that's wow. how it came out. <laughs> it looks like some of me, you know, God, how'd they do this? No, it's Henry standing up, looking vertically up and the camera below him. <laughs> oh my god yeah i definitely thought it was more complicated than that i was imagining yeah the full-on rig and you know yeah well, and that. believe me we used that in various other sequences in the movie but that was the as you see it, it came out perfect so um sometimes the simplest path is the best rarely i find but it took a lot mm-hmm. of the wrong way to get to to go back to the simplicity of wow it's right under my nose um, mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the Viz Effects plays a hu- huge part. So, with what you know, DJ did uh, with the Viz Effects, made it believable. But Henry is in that shot is exactly as I just described it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about Batman because you said something about uh, you know BVS is your favorite, and you know rightfully so. But you said you were able to really. Uh, put Batman on screen the way you guys always had envisioned, the way you'd always dreamt. So um, tell me more about that. Like, what what were those conversations of like, hey, we get to do our Batman. What's that going to be? And then how you made that happen? Right. Well, Zach and I, of course, met early on, talked about how we wanted him to move, you know, what sort of, you know, look who's playing him, Ben's playing him. He's going to be this you know, sort of an homage to the Miller Dark Knight version, the shorter ears, the thicker, you know, really buff, really solid guy, older. Um, so, you know, all of that was talked about. And then, look, I wanted to see Batman move like that since I was a kid. And, mm-hmm. you know, Rich, Rich and I both have, we're, I don't know, gosh, what are we, 40 years, 40 more years in the martial art world. And, we have an array of various styles that we've studied and quite a, uh, quite a treasure chest to draw from. And so we, ha- we, we brought in, uh, you know, obviously Rich, and I, and I said this on another, <laughs> another interview, look, Rich is like a brother to me, but ultimately I got to get the right person for the job. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I had auditions and I said, look, man, I, you know, I, 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 I can you come in and audition for this? And, you know, obviously Rich is pro and he's like, absolutely. And I looked at, I don't know how many people, you know, different ages. Most of them were younger than Rich at the time. And, and I looked, and I looked and he blew them all out of the water and I was so happy, <laughs> but I had to make sure we were making the right choice. And, um, we couldn't have made Batman move the way he did if it, if Rich wouldn't have uh, didn't double him. 
period. Period. He's such a, and Zach and I both know that, and we're both so grateful that he could be part of it. As is Ben, as is everyone who's involved with the, the movies. Um, Rich is an athletic freak and an amazing performer. And uh, there's things I can ask of him that many other people, especially in those suits, they, they wouldn't pull it off and we would have to change the move or we would have to change the sequence. So, you know, it, it was this perfect storm of Zach getting the project, me being involved, we got rich. And then we also had a great team, as I, you know, always put together of guys we'd work with. Guillermo Grispo, Ryan Watson, Wayne Daglish, um, you know, they were, they were on the ground and a big part of helping choreograph that. Um, but we all put it together in LA and we did a uh, stunt biz for the Martha Rescue specifically when I say put it together. I'm talking about the Martha Rescue, which is my favorite Batman sequence of the project. And, uh, and, and rightfully so. We, 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 would all be, we would all back you up on that. <laughs> That's my, my opinion. Everyone's got them. But that was the first thing we shot. Zach likes to do that. He's like, let's, let's do an action sequence right out of the gate. So we'll shoot the, what we call the Martha Rescue. Awesome. So we shot that stunt phase early and um, a lot of caring went into it. <laughs> a lot of caring went into it. And there's actually a stunt phase out there that's about 20 seconds, 20 or 30 seconds longer than the act what we actually shot. So there's a few more moves. But um, yeah, and, and then when the final product uh, hit and we, and we, I saw it in editorial, I was just, yeah. He's finally moved. <laughs> Batman has finally moved the way I've always wanted him to move. You know, Dame, so I... many people have asked me this question, and maybe you can, uh, you can clear it up and put it to rest. Um, they always ask me, the, they say the choreography looks so much like the video game, and, and you'll see like pictures online sometimes of like, a, you know, comparing, you know, the choreography from from BVS and then a Batman video game. And, you know, it looks similar, just one snapshot of a move. Um, and they asked me, and it's like, uh, you know, like, I didn't do the car choreography, you know, to be honest with you. So I can't answer that question. And, you know, I know we played video games when we were, <laughs> when we were young guys, we used to play, but, you know, one of us grew out of it and one of us didn't. And, um, I'm the one who didn't, by the way. But uh, so, so I, tell, I don't have time. <laughs> so I tell people, I don't think it was, you know, but but we have the guy here now that can answer that question. Can you set that straight? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, well, let me start by saying you weren't there when we choreographed it initially but you were there when we were shooting the viz obviously and you know you were part of part of polishing everything let me put it that way um, but to your point yeah I've, I've been asked the same thing and I believe it's Arkham Asylum or, or one of the games that if I'm getting that correct I, I if I get that wrong sorry sorry I, yeah, I think I, I think it is yeah, it is. I mean, they, they pretty much say the Arkham games just in whole, you know, as as an entity. But yeah, got it. So so, uh, no, I've never played the game. Um, I will say because I you know I like to speak facts. I think one of my stepsons had had one of the games in his room, but I never saw. I've never. I, I think I've seen the cover of one, but I've never watched. You know, played the game or watched the game be played um, and I so that was all and I don't ever the way that I like to create is a new and from the moment look I, I am we are all made up of things that have inspired us in the past and I know that I am made up of that whether it be comic books whether it be um, Sergio Leone movies you know westerns Kurosawa George Miller films you know Mad Max Etc. Etc. You can go on and on and on. John Ford movies. I can. I can keep going. Those are in my psyche. Sci-fi movies are in my psyche. So, and all this, the martial arts that, that we've trained over decades. Um, but I like to try and keep it fresh and uh, a new concept. And again, I'm looking at the character in the story and trying to be in the moment, and that's how I create. So, 
I I have seen some people who go to YouTube and, <laughs> hey, look at this, look at that. Then they sort of cut and paste things. My conscience wouldn't allow me to do that, and nor would my creativity allow me to do that. Not not I'm not saying that I haven't maybe watched a cinematic and went, oh, that's kind of cool, and you know there might be things that in my subconscious sink in, but. I never set out that way, and I purposely don't watch other things so they, they don't taint it. Uh, I think it was just one of those weird um, coincidences in life. Um, I, I was flattered, and I went, oh, cool, that's, that's, that's great, because people were very complimentary about it, but they were, they were surprised when they, didn't know, they, they found out that there was no connection between the game and the choreography um, being created for that film. I mean, I think it's it's just a testament that there were other Batman fans who felt the way you did, which is, wouldn't it be great if Batman moved like this? Isn't this something we hadn't seen before? And you just use different mediums to do it. So maybe they're just kindred spirits, even if it wasn't a direct inspiration. 100%. I mean, look, Batman... <laughs> <laughs> Batman set the foundation for us to, you know, expand upon it. It's not like we just came out with two crazy concepts. It's like, okay, we're still yeah. guided by, <laughs> yeah. by the character of Batman. So, yeah, it's not that crazy. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that you auditioned a lot of people before choosing Richard. Just because, to me, it's like, oh, yeah, Zack Snyder... Damon Caro, Richard Citroen, you're a team. You guys like just go from one project to the next to the next. So I just assumed you guys were like, oh, Ben's going to be playing Batman. Well, great. Richard's going to double him. Done. So I'm, I mean, I'm kind of impressed, but also like, yeah, you made your friend work for it. Well, yeah. And, you know, that's just it is I can't say that's enough. He's like a brother to me. <laughs> but ultimately... I have to do what's right for the project. And he understands that, I think, unless he's, unless he's yeah. cursing my name under his breath. Um, <laughs> and, and, Rich, and by the way, <clears throat> Rich wouldn't want a job without earning it. Um, he didn't have to do much to earn it. It was one audition, and I went, yeah, I'm an idiot. What was I thinking? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was one of the things, too, is Ben was a lot thicker than Rich. So we were also looking like, oh, you know, maybe we need somebody bigger and that sort of thing. But with the suit, it didn't matter, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, so there were other, other issues. It wasn't just, oh, I just had to make sure that we were making the right choice. You know, um, trust but verify is the old saying, I guess, that is yeah. true. Yeah. Do your due diligence. What do you think, Rich? I'd love to get Rich's take on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it speaks, and, you know, it's the same reason why you're, you're one of, a few people you're you're married of course and, but just theoretically you're one of the few people that I would uh, men that I would set my sister up with because you you can't find a more high character person than Damon Carl I mean I, I say that he, he, like he says we are like brothers uh, he's, he's very very close but it's true it's it, I don't lie when I say this he's, he's a very high character person and he he it, he it would not he would not allow himself to just hand anybody a job whether it's a member of his family or close friend or whatever you know and that's you know one of the many things I respect about him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that, I mean and it's it's worked out for you guys you know you guys have uh... You've, you've certainly earned it, and then, you know, the uh, end result speaks for itself. Uh, speaking of the Martha Rescue, though, like, was that one of those things where, you know, I remember a couple years before BVS came out, seeing another movie, being like, man, like, I love a lot of Batman movies. I love most Batman movies, but I've never seen Batman quite, you know, quite do this. So... Did you all like take it as a mission of like, oh, we want to, I always assumed you did, of like, oh, we want to do the quintessential live action Batman fight on film. Like was, was were there conversations like that where you're like, we're going to, you know, we're going to set a new bar and then you went for it? Um, no, <clears throat> there wasn't a conversation. I, I don't even concern myself with that. I was just so geeked out to have the opportunity to, to create a Batman fight. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't, I don't even worry about the bar. I just dove in and we all dove in and we're in heaven. And, you know, look what, look what happened. It's just a matter yeah. of, it's literally, I'm, I'm a fan and thank God I found a career that I could still be a child in. Um, 
and I attack it with, with passion and try and create a project that would make somebody stand in line at a midnight showing. Mm -hmm. Those are still a thing anymore in this crazy day and age. People might not know what I'm talking about. But, you know, that, that's the passion I want to create because that's what movies did for me. And it's really just the love of, of the character and love of the, the project. And, and it wasn't a, what, there was no intention to go, oh, I'm, we're going to set the bar here. We're just going to hmm. do our thing and the bar will land where the bar lands. Well, you did it. I mean, for the record. You, you did. So whether or not that was the intention, you achieved it. Because, yeah, I mean, we, especially those of us on the show, Brendan and Jamie, who couldn't be here, but God, like Batman fans, it's like, it was, uh, you know, you I, think you I think you said it was your favorite scene in the movie, but I think people now put it up there as one of the best Batman scenes of in any media. So certainly something to be proud of for both of you. Indeed, very honored to be a part of it and, and very honored at the way it's been received. And, and yes, I mean, we get compliments on that, that sequence a lot. And since we're talking about BVS, I would be remiss if I didn't mention you were also Joe Chill. You killed the Waynes. <laughs> and I, I have very mixed feelings on this. Like in, in some cases, like that's terrible. You, you killed them, but it also created Batman in the process. So thank you, but also murder. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> yeah, that's where I started by saying I, I, I believe a thank you's in order. Hello. Yeah, right? I mean, there'd be no <laughs> right. Batman if you didn't. So I guess, I guess it's worth it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was super, super cool. It's funny because, you know, Rich and I studied acting when we were younger and Rich studied it more than I did and has done more than I have but that was something you know I love all parts of cinema all aspects of it and and uh, we do little parts when we were younger and and uh, we're really into it and then the stunt work just became the passion and uh, so Zach was having problems casting that role and we were uh, we went down to Scout Chicago probably about, I don't know, I would say a month before we were going to go fly there and shoot it. We were up in Michigan, and um, we're kind of walking through the sequence, uh, checking, uh, scouting that that theater, and uh, Zach said, he goes, you know, I, I can't find anyone to play this. I'm having trouble. He goes, you know, you should just play this role. He goes, it's going to be so tricky because of the, the nature of, of all of it being high speed and it, there were super specific angles, you know, how you had to hold the gun and, and just, mm. it, it seems like and you could just get an actor to step in and do it, but <clears throat> excuse me, um, an actor to step in and do it, but it's, you have to have such an understanding of lens size, the right, the, the actual speed you need to move versus the frame rate, et cetera. It's kind of tricky. Right. And he goes, it'd be mm -hmm. so cool for you to play this and you would, you would help us get through it as well. <clears throat> so I, I said, look, man, I'd love to, but I was swamped. I was you know, shooting second unit and coordinating. I said, I just, I just don't know if I have the time to do it. And he goes, okay, you know, well, think about it. So, and I remember telling Rich this too, that uh, we flew back to Michigan and we were finishing up there. And I was just sitting in my apartment there and sort of flashed back to our younger days and thought about it and went, what am I thinking? I would have peed my pants for a part like this when I was younger, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I, I literally like scrambled to the phone and called him and I'm like, did you cast it yet? You know, and I don't know what I was, I was just so beaten down by the movie in a good way from, from everything we'd been doing. I said, look, if you haven't cast that yet, I'd love to play that. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And he's like, no, I haven't. You're him. So that was that. And it was a blast to play him. And um, yeah, it was mighty cold that night, though. It was funny. <laughs> um, it's crazy. It was, it was uncredited. And because like I, I knew you played it. And then when I looked at your IMDb, it wasn't on there. And so then I started doubting myself. And I was like, no, I swear that was him. But yeah, it's like, it's not even in, you know, it's not, it's not in the credits. 
credits. No, it, and that, it, <laughs> that's just a silly contractual issue with WB. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's all it was. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's me. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I mean, there has there only been... I'm trying to think of like live action Joe Chills, you know, there was one in Batman Begins and then there's this. I think that's it because Batman 89, it was Jack Napier. So it's a small club. Club. So yeah. Far. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> well, that's very cool. Yeah, it was fun. It was super cool and uh, glad I did it. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Um, and then, you know, I, we have to talk about Justice League. The 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 Odyssey Which that was one? Justice League. I'm kidding. Oh, exactly, I'm kidding. exactly. Um, especially, I mean, uh, you know, like we Richard and I, you know, talked to what a month ago, a month and a half ago, and it's like, well, finally now that that uh, the Zack Snyder uh, version is out there, it it now feels a little bit easier to talk about it. It's a little less painful. It's a little less stressful. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess approaching Justice League, like going right from BVS into Justice League, uh, tell us, yeah, kind of what that process looked like. And I, I'm very interested in the plan, the overall plan, because we've heard about it, you know, from various sources and out there. But, you know, from someone who is on the inside of that plan, the the five movie arc, I'd love to hear your insights. Yeah, that was um, wrapped to BVS and approximately, I mean, early R&D, just conversations started happening immediately uh, with Zach and I, but I didn't come on in an official capacity until, oh, I don't know, six months after BVS. And, uh, you know, Zach has his classic whiteboard photos that he sent. And let me backtrack to when we were prepping Batman vs. Superman, he gave the verbal pitch to me at our training facility uh, was at a hangar in Burbank about his idea for the three Justice League movies. Mm -hmm. um, so, and by the way, it touched on early in our Man of Steel meeting. So mm -hmm. there was, as with everything he does, there's a lot of thought process going into that. Um, um, and so he did the whiteboard and wrote it all out uh, at his office and I think again he's there's I think infamous photos of that somewhere online a few people have shared and maybe Snyder has himself and I'm, I'm not certain but uh, yeah it's super cool <laughs> it's super <laughs> cool and so we began the process of the first one first of three movies and you know the tone was different not immediately but um, we were prepping, prepping that in L.A. And then I actually got pulled to go do Wonder Woman because um, I had to go in there last minute and replace somebody who wasn't working out, who I had put there. <laughs> um, oh, and everyone okay. thought would work out. Oh, okay. But um, so I got I designed with uh, my team a fair bit of Justice League and then had to go do Wonder Woman last minute. And, you know, with almost zero prep and just go in there and start shooting. And then they came over, were, that, that was in England as well. And then Justice League moved over to England. And then basically after I wrapped Wonder Woman, I, I came back home for just a few weeks. And I was traveling back and forth between L.A. and England and then just ended up staying back in England. So it was a long run. It was two movies almost back to back. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a crazy process. And, you know, BBS came out. I was at the end of shooting Wonder Woman, and when BBS came out, you know, the f as you know, there are fans who love it, and there are people who hate the movie, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there are critics the same, right? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that if a movie is saying something, that's the type of reaction you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on Fight Club, David Fincher's Fight Club uh, for that was an amazing six or nine months nine months I think I spent on that and and that was another movie that was not well received critics panned it but it's a very deep movie and 
if you make something that's deep and has substance, you don't get it all in one watch. You don't understand it. And, and now, you know, you, you look back at Fight Club is this amazingly lauded cult classic, as is BBS. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, we knew that. Zach, I was in Italy um, shooting some of the beach stuff from Wonder Woman. And Zach was still in England and he called me. In fact, it was Easter, Easter Sunday, early morning. And, um, yeah. And uh, I think it'd come out that Friday. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was just going, man, you know, he was kind of, he was surprised at the way it was received and, you know, the way the studio was reacting, et cetera. And we had a conversation about it. And so, you know, that sort of, let's say, lent itself to the studio being very uh, more involved in Justice League. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but to me, they, they automatically, and this was my, my thing right away, is they, they didn't play to the people that, the, the massive amounts of money it made and the massive amount of people who loved it. They didn't play to those people and, and didn't show their gratitude towards them. They tried to appease the people who hated it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this to me is a microcosm of life. Then you didn't make anyone happy. Because you mm -hmm. tried to imitate what another universe was doing, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. and uh, and you slapped the people in the face who supported you all up to that point. That's my short version. No, I yeah, I I know exactly what you're saying. I think that all that checks out, and so yeah, I mean I. One thing I love about, you know, the, the films that Zack Snyder makes is that he takes big swings. He takes risks. He wants to do something different. And, you know, that's what I appreciate, appreciate about those films. And but I also know that that's then you just run the risk of turning certain people off. And that's just got to be OK, you know, better than better than playing it safe and boring. Like, give us something interesting. Give us something to chew on. And I think that. BVS is very much along those lines and you know now it we, we just looked back on it for five years and we at least we feel we're like god we just feel it, it's only aged better in those five years um because we've been able to to really take our time and digesting it and dissecting it and and what came after you know I think only complimented it, you know, for, for better and for worse, like the, you know, what happened with justice league for worse. And then seeing Zack Snyder's justice league, I think for better, like when you see that kind of where everything was going and how it all clicks into the same puzzle, it all starts, it, it works even better. I think that way. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so that's, um, it's true. It's true. If I could just say that, yeah, I concur with everything you you're, you just said, and if yeah, if you're going to make something, as I stated earlier, if you're going to have an opinion and make a movie that says something, not propaganda, just take a position in a story and and lay, lay it out there. Mm -hmm. You'll touch some people and you'll turn off other people. That's okay. It's art. Yeah, yeah. You're, you, if you like it, great. If it if it speaks to you, great. If it doesn't, great. I love that opinion too. I like freedom of thought. I like difference of opinion. So that's great. Um, I don't have an issue with that. And and it's those movies that are layered like that uh, that touch the soul and and touch the mind and the spirit. And and when you watch a movie like that, it, it it stirs you in a way. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's it's uh, cleansing. But it makes mm -hmm. you think. And I'm wondering why? Why did I react that way? What is the what is the process? What's going on? And, and you know, Zach's so deliberate in what he does. He's very layered. And I've always said this: the critics <laughs> critics don't get him. They think they they thought that he well he's just this. He's just that. And I've I've said this this old saying and I said it before we started doing Justice League when we originally were prepping it in, in 2015 I think 
and I said that uh, there's an old saying that truth passes through three stages. First, it's ignored. So first stage is ignored. Second stage, it's violently opposed. And then the third stage, it's accepted as self-evident. And you can see that in every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. Cinema, mm -hmm. fashion, music, technology, you name it. You just start to look around and, and it's there. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's this recurring theme. And I said, Man of Steel was the first stage. You were ignored. It was ignored. Uh, that's a cute little thing. Just I don't see it. BVS was the second stage. It was violently opposed. And I said, mark my words. And this was when we were originally shooting. This is 2015. I said, when, when you release Justice League, in other words, he releases his version of Justice League. I didn't know there was going to be another one then. Mm -hmm. It will be the third mm -hmm. stage. I said, they're going to accept it as self-evident. Mark mm -hmm. my words. Now, it took six years for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I didn't think that would be the stage, but if you look at the response to his version of Justice League, critics and fans alike, hmm, he's the same guy. Yeah. He's the same storyteller. Yeah. You have now risen your level of understanding, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, oh man. So, I mean... There was the, the the plan for you know three Justice League films, which is interesting because when they announced it, it they announced it as Justice League one and two. They didn't announce a third, so I think there was there was a moment in there where uh, Zach would say, "Oh, you know, it's a, a five film arc," and, and I remember a lot of us being like, "Wait, what's the fifth? Because it was Man of Steel, BVS, Justice League one, Justice League two. What was what was the fifth? And then as we learned more, we kind of figured out, oh, also Justice League three. But at some point during the original filming the principal photography of justice league the it was kind of decided that it was going to be a little more standalone is that accurate no no <laughs> no 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 not to the filming not not to my understanding i mean you'd have to ask Zack snyder because i can't speak for him but no yeah no 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 that was yeah uh, that was never the case when huh. that movie huh. no in fact i, I let me <laughs> stirring my memory right now he no we, he taught told me we're gonna do this and then if you want to come do two and three yeah we're gonna shoot two and three together oh so, okay not true oh, okay interesting yeah i just I, I just remember like hearing the murmurs kind of during the you know the production of you know with sort of the onset rewrites of trying to make you know obviously trying to to lighten it up and all that but at the same time i just remember he, sort of hearing like oh but you know they're gonna they're gonna make it a little more standalone because they were trying to like use the contract with ben to get him to do the solo movie instead of justice league 2 i don't know so there's lots of versions yeah of no it. he was gonna do the there's solo movie we were gonna do the solo movie right uh, ben wanted me to do that with him and we were gonna mm -hmm. shoot it right after justice mm -hmm. league but then it all went away we were gonna yeah we, i was prepping that movie actually right after justice league but uh no, that was just going to, he was going to do that and then he would have come right back to Justice League 2 and 3. Oh, okay. So you were, you were lined up for that too. Mm-hmm. And you too, Richard? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would assume, but it's funny of all the t of the times we've talked, I've never thought to ask about the plans for the solo film. We, we get caught up in other things. So you guys were all uh, prepping that. Yeah, we didn't get far into it. It was or we didn't get on the ground. You know, we were. I was just doing. Uh, I had a, someone do. Uh, I was doing Wonder Woman reshoots while budget was being laid out for it, and I was I met with his producer, and uh, you know that sort of thing. It never got far in. Ben, it, it all went away before we got to those stages. But mm -hmm. but you know there was a schedule where we were going to shoot it. We were going to shoot it in L.A. and maybe a tad in England, but mainly it was going to be in L.A., which what, what basically brought me on board after being in, away for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But, I mean, I assume you read the script and you knew where it was going and all that? I did indeed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. Perhaps I will a story for another time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perhaps a story for off air. Um, Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that, that's what happened. And then, you know, I mean, I don't know how far we want to go with this, but let me just, 
let me let me get back on track here. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm radically surprised and incredibly happy that Zach got to release his version of Justice League mm -hmm. because I thought it, there was a two percent chance of that ever happening in the capacity in which he did. Mm -hmm. I thought. You know, we were just going to watch it at his house, which I did see it at his house in December 2018. Um, you know, it was the black and chrome version with some previs and all green screen and things like that. But it was powerful then. Um, I thought maybe that was the only way I was ever going to see it. And uh, I'm truly amazed at the journey. And I, I've told this somewhere else I don't recall but Zach and Rich as well I, I've said this to both of uh, Zach and Rich is they are they have been very amazing examples of patience to me in my life I, I've tried to espouse patience but I don't always act it out <laughs> and Zach and Rich are very patient individuals and that's really been an influence to me in my life as an example and this is case in point with what went on with him being replaced, et cetera, in Justice League. And, and myself and <clears throat> DJ as well, we're, we're, we sometimes have a hard time holding our tongue. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when it all went down, we were so mad and um, saddened and, and felt for Zach, you know, mm -hmm. you feel bad for your friend. Mm -hmm that we were the ones that basically started the, I don't know if you've heard the version of, or the, the rumor of release it on a flash drive and leave it in an airport bathroom. I, I feel like I have heard that, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, a, it's a thing that's been out there. Zach's talked about it and then people were yes. kind of like, well, wow, yes. that's weird. And No, it was actually a thing. I mean, DJ was going to fly to one undisclosed airport and I was going to fly to another undisclosed airport <laughs> and we were going to let it be found, you know, perhaps in, indirectly direct someone there and just so it would be seen on the internet to the fan, for the fans. But, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there was, there was a lot of issues with that and, and we were, <laughs> we were so adamant about it and Zach was, Zach was like, you know, no, you know, I can't do that. You know, I can't. And we're like, no one's going to see it. And we, we were even to the point where it was like, guys, you need to get off my back about this. And we we're like, all right, we'll just do it because we were pissed at how they're treating me. Because I know, you know. <clears throat> and when, <clears throat> excuse me, and when uh, this all came about, that he was actually going to be able to finish his version and release it on HBO Max, I told him directly. And I said, thank God you didn't listen to, to me. <laughs> 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 this would have never happened if you listened to me. He goes, no, no, it was coming from the right place. And I went, yeah, you know how to play the long game. I, 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 I didn't have the patience to do that. So it was very impressive that he did that because he was, he was able to be patient and karma took the long road around, but it really, it really reached its destination, let's say. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean... It, it's, it did take longer than it should have. I mean, honestly, we should have never, it should have never became the, the mess that it became. Um, but it is good that there was uh, justice done in the end and that not only was it released in the way that he wanted to release it, but as you said, it's been embraced. You know, it's, it's, it's been very much appreciated. I mean, I think it's, it's freaking great i love it I, I i've i've you know i mean many of us have watched it multiple times but it's just uh it was it was somehow worth the wait and it lived up to the hype and so it's it is feel redemptive for you guys and for zach and for the whole team and so it is so great that it, it made it out there um before all the drama like put all the drama aside but like going from like bvs to justice league um you know now you know you well even for starting with Man of Steel where you were thinking about Superman and then you get to BVS and you're like, well, now I got to start thinking Batman and Wonder Woman and then to Justice League of thinking about the rest of the league. You know, how did you approach that um, as far as, you know, crafting the different sequences for all the different heroes and making them unique to that character? Well, again, that was 2015 and I was... I think I was only on officially for about three months before I had to leave for Wonder Woman unexpectedly. 
So mm-hmm. we only got so mm-hmm. far, and I had a good team. And Rich, did you come in right after I left, or did you wait till England to join? No, I, I came in after you left. Great, and I think that was that's what I had hoped because you needed to be there anyways. I think you know I was planning on bringing you, but um, but that was a big part. So you, you get so Rich, and uh, again we had designed <laughs> the original version of. Old Bailey, and then we had designed uh, skeletons for the tunnel and Heroes Park, of course, things like that. But when I took off to Wonder Woman, Rich and Matt Rigetti and Freddie Busiegas, you guys sort of kept creating at that point and, and moved it forward until you guys came to England, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Got it. So do you want to talk about that process there and then I'll pick it back up? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we basically worked on, because there's a lot of things that were kind of up in the air at that point. Um, so we basically worked on a lot of concept stuff, you know, things that you had, you had started and they, they continued. And then some of the ideas that, that, uh, Freddie and, and Matt threw around and, you know, we shot, like one of the things was that, uh, the thing that, uh, Freddie released online about Batman discovering a parademon. Mm-hmm. You know, that that was never shot. You know, that was it a concept awesome. thing that they were they were coming up with ideas. So it was things like that that we were just trying to be prepared when we got out to England. Got it. Yeah, yeah. And then when you guys arrived, I was already shooting Wonder Woman. I remember you guys driving in the bus. <laughs> so I was already <laughs> haggard walking around. You guys hopped out in January and so they landed there and then continued prepping and I was finishing Wonder Woman and then I think literally there was like a one week overlay between Justice League starting and Wonder Woman finishing. Um, And then I came back on to Justice League but it was in a second unit capacity mainly so a lot of the design, we would still design with DJ and Zach, etc. and and, uh, but a lot of the sequences had been placeholder. Uh, they were in the skeleton modes from VisFX and then what the stunt guys had done. And, and uh, it was a tricky process because I had to go away and then come back. So it wasn't like all of the other Zack movies where I was there the entire time, you know, prep, early prep. And so I had that little bit of disconnect and then came back in, in purely second unit capacity because there was so much to shoot. So, uh, you know, and then I had did all the stuff we had done on Wonder Woman. Obviously, I wanted to carry that over to, uh, to Justice League. And, and uh, it was, uh, was fast-paced and, uh, and uh, exciting. I, I have a question uh, for Damon, Andy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to channel my inner Brendan Lowe here because I, I, know, I know he's his favorite DC movie is uh, Wonder Woman. So... I'm trying to think of what question Brendan might ask you. And <laughs> what comes to mind is No Man's Land. I, I, I thought it was amazing. I mean, I just loved the sequence. Um, can you, can, Damon, can you talk about, you know, that sequence and your role in that sequence? Uh, yeah, and you're talking specifically about when she crosses over? Yes. 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 You know, honestly, that was a... That was a scene that Patty and I worked on together, I, I would say the most. I mean, all of the other action sequences we just created and, and, and you know, did our thing. But that was one that she really um, you had some key beats. I would love to see this. I would love to see that. And, uh, and then we uh, put it to use. But it was more of a – and I think why you – this was your question, Rich. You like the sequence. I think it's because – it's very character driven there and you feel the you feel the energy you feel the power and the forces what she's fighting against and it's it's her sort of baptism into this world and this this war and it, it's really powerful I, I agree with you um, but yeah that was that was something that we uh, we chatted about you know there's not a lot of action there it's just really character beats that's to me how the way it was conveyed and, and really just plan that and, and playing to those strengths as we always tried to. 
How much uh, second unit directing did you do on that project? Uh, I did a fair bit. On, on the movie or on the scene? On the movie. Oh, uh, I, I, I lost count. That's all I did, really. You know, months and months and months. Can you, can you mention some of the sequences in particular? That, that yeah, I mean, I probably shot 95% of the beach battle. Um, I shot the entirety of the fight rooms. I mean, the majority of action in that movie I shot. That's just the reality of it, hmm. other than maybe the, hmm. end, the ending sequence. The end battle, and I still shot some of the end battle as well, uh, or, or was there with Patty at that point. But yeah, the majority of the action was, I, we just did on second unit. Um, Patty shot, she shot, I guess she kind of shot the beginning and the end of the alley, and then we shot all the action. So yeah, I mean, action-wise, um, you know, more so like when we work with Zach, He's so great. He could. He, he, the only reason he needs a second unit director is because he doesn't have time to shoot it, not because he doesn't have the ability. Um, and that's that's the honest God truth. Uh, but you know he's intricately involved and he can he can shoot the action no problem. But um, you know, a lot of people directors need help with it, and that's the point of it. They don't necessarily have doesn't have to be a strength of theirs. Uh, and Patty did some cool stuff, but she was so busy with all the first unit stuff, and I, I had, yeah, I mean, like I said, the majority, the vast majority of the action, I would say 90, 95% of the movie I shot, uh, action ones. That beach battle was really cool, too. I, I like that. For sheer action, I thought that was was awesome as well. Where, where did you guys shoot that? Uh, Camarota in southwestern Italy. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was fun, fun to do. It was crazy, crazy hectic, but but it uh, came out nice. Well, and then a similar question then for for BVS and Justice League, how much of the second unit stuff did you direct on that? Were were some of those sequences? Uh, BVS, not not a lot, because I was just on the ground with Zach. So we shot. I mean, I was together with him for all, all the action sequences, but I, he probably shot, like say the, the Martha Rescue, he probably shot 70% of it. Oh, okay. Eight, and I oh, shot the okay. remainder. But, you know, when he and I work together, it's, we look at the viz and, you know, if you've ever seen, I think it's online now, but if you ever see the uh, juxtaposed version of what we shot and the stunt viz we did, you know, months prior to it, half a year prior to it, it's... It's shot for shot. So, you know, we do that by design. We're, we we uh, create that as a blueprint so we can move efficiently and, and have the most uh, aesthetically pleasing shots. You know, and then I shot some of Batman Superman fight and I shot a little bit of the car chase. I think he mainly shot the car chase. Or we, we together. When I say he, it's, it's us together. Um, but then Justice League was, yeah, it was... I. I Tons of stuff for Justice League, just because it was there were so many battles to shoot. So you know, mm -hmm. I shot tons of the Themyscira battle. I shot. Uh, I don't know what the percentage, but he shot a lot of Heroes Park. I shot. Uh, I don't know a chunk of Heroes Park, um, and you know, just every, any action sequence, just about. Um, I, mm -hmm. I did. I did a, a portion of. Wow. Okay. So uh, I can. What what has been some of the biggest challenges or or unexpected hurdles? You know, putting some of these sequences to film. That's a great question. I mean, the challengers are, are <laughs> the challenge is to create something that's real and and makes sense to the scene and is not redundant and hopefully has a fresh feel to it. You know, there's so many challenges as far as logistics where we're shooting and country we're shooting in, availability of talented individuals to be in the sequences. Um, you know, there, I mean, I could go on and on. Weather, mm -hmm. rigging issues, there's, there's, there's so many. Um, but those are not abnormal. Everyone deals with those in cinema. Mm -hmm. When you said making something like feel, you know, feel new or fresh, uh, has that happened? Like, have you had to stop yourself or you're like, oh, you know what? I have seen this before. I don't want to do it. I've seen it before. I need to think of it, think of it in a new way. So it's... All the time. 
every time okay. I create something. Okay. Yeah, when I when I when we design things, I'll make so many versions, or we will make so many versions that I can't stand. Up, oh, nope. Next, next. Going back to this grind board. That's when you have time. You know that you can't. You don't have the luxury of doing that on every project. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. well, I'll make a bunch of versions, and that's the way just my brain works, I guess. Um, that ooh. 100% of that sucks. 90% of that sucks. Now 70% of it sucks. No, oh, I like half of it. You know, it's that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it continues on. Yeah. Well, it's like writing, right? Like when you write something, you write the rough draft, and you're like, it's all horrible, but at least now I have something I can exactly. improve on. <laughs> exactly. I loved it a week ago when I wrote this. Now it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll do that when I, sometimes on shooting viz. You know, at the end of it, I'm like, what? does this suck? Because we just spent two weeks shooting it. And can you watch this? You know, you just get that. And you know what really made me uh, realize that's okay is when I did Fight Club with David Fincher, who I think is one of the greatest, I would put him on his all-time directors. I put he and, he and Zach are very similar um, in their knowledge, in their, their composition, their understanding of story, their knowledge of camera and camera equipment. And I mean, they're both just geniuses. Mm -hmm. But I remember when Fincher, I saw him, well, this was 98, this was a long time ago. But I, we did Fight Club and there was a, I think it was a cast and crew screening and a little party afterwards. And I remember seeing Fight Club and I went, oh, into my head, thank God I finally worked on a movie that I like. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, thought it said something and was deep, and et cetera. And, and I, ran into him at the gathering afterwards and I told him, I said, man, I, I got to tell you, it's, it's amazing. I, I really am happy to be a part of that, this film. And then he, he's like, this is Fincher, who is one of the most confident individuals you will ever meet in your life. Mm -hmm. And every reason to be so, by the way. And he goes, really? Did, did you really feel that? And I couldn't believe it. I just went, what the, who? I've never seen this version of him. I've never seen this side of him. He goes, because honestly, I've seen it a hundred, you know, from editing it for months yeah. and months and months. He goes, I've seen it a hundred times. He goes, I don't know anymore. And I said, no, man, trust me. So, you know, you get, you get too close to things sometimes and you, you sort of lose your, I think, your reference point and you have to step back and, and, and take a breath. So, anyways. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. So, speaking of sort of like the, the next... We've seen now Zack Snyder's Justice League. We know, you know, kind of where things were left there. Uh, so, you know, I I asked Richard uh, recently about like, oh, like the next, you know, Justice League 2, was it all a nightmare film? And he goes, you know what? He goes, I don't really know, but I bet Damon would know. So <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about what the plan for Justice League 2 and 3 were? Because there's a lot of talk out there. There are a lot of like rumors and potential story beats, but, it, you know, I never know what to trust and what's real and what's not. So I didn't know. And, you know, obviously don't tell me anything you're not allowed to, but like yeah, where but things were going. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to speak too freely about that because I kind of leave that to Zach. I don't want to step on his toes. Right. Um, right. When it comes to what he wants to get out. I've always been very, I mean, look, I just started doing podcasts this last year <laughs> or mm -hmm. this, this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last year. Um, because I've sort of, wanted to not say speak out of turn i've always mm -hmm. tried to be very respectful mm -hmm. about that yeah. um yeah but um that's really the go-to and i don't know honestly don't remember the breakdown it's not fresh mm -hmm. in my head but i will answer your question and this is to my understanding of what my memory recalls you said i'm going to paraphrase your question to ensure i understood it you said, was number two all a nightmare? So can you mm -hmm. clarify that question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like Justice League 2, it seemed like that was going to be all in sort of the nightmare timeline, and then Justice League 3 was essentially setting things right? I, I will say this, and this is, again, my recollection, so you need to ask Zack Snyder for the uh, confirmation. Justice League 2 was not all post-apocalyptic i'll say okay okay that much i'll all say right. all right well that's okay right. i know that all doesn't right. help you that's much okay. but but that can clarify that for you at least. it's somewhat helpful 
and I'll keep trying to bother Zach it to see if it poses more questions than answers. I'm sure. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, interesting. All right. I'm not saying it wasn't some. I'm just saying it wasn't all. Okay. okay. That's fine. Andy wants to punch me. Well, no, I get it. I get it. Listen, I, I, I live in the world of NDAs myself, and people ask me stuff all the time, and I'm just like, ah, you know, I can't, I can't say anything. So I get it, but I still can ask. Yeah, and this other isn't side. even an NDA. It's just me being respectful to my buddy. Yeah, of course, of course, and that's fair enough. It's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a code of ethics NDA. It's an internal yeah, NDA. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I was going to say, we have something uh, that we, we joke about in our industry, and I don't know if you guys call it this, but we call it a friend DA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I call it an HDA, an honor DA. Okay. Um, okay. But yes, uh, that's friends is good too. Um, would I have loved to have made those movies? Yes. And mm-hmm. when, I can't remember... If it's when I saw the trailer for Zack's Justice League or when I saw it, I got the luxury of seeing it on an IMAX screen about 10 days before it was released on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it was insane. It was insane. Um, I think it was after that that I, I think I text, I can't remember if I texted him or called him and just said, my gosh, you know, it's amazing. You, you know, truly are an amazing filmmaker. And I, and I said, you know, I, I it, it sort of pinged my heart and really made me want to wish we could have finished the other two movies. Yeah. And he said, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, yes, do I wish we could have made those? He- yeah. And a lot of people do now. <laughs> oh, 100%. But a lot, of, but, yeah, a lot 100%. Of, but, but a handful of people don't, and they have power. So, God bless them. Right. So... It seems like for now we're closing the book on on that, or we're still holding out hope. You're asking my opinion? Yeah. Let me put it like this. I don't think they'll ever be made, but stranger things have happened. Mm -hmm. Look what happened with his, Mm -hmm. the release of Justice League. Yeah, yeah. That, to me, was harder to get finished than, maybe not, but on par because of the, the sort of support. But if you asked me, if I was a betting man, I would say I don't think we'll see them. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's totally it. Is, is, I mean, I, I ate crow when we got the official re- release of Zack Snyder's Justice League because I was definitely in the camp of like, oh, maybe someday 20 years down the road, but nobody wants to do it right now. I, I, I'm totally guilty of that. And I was happy to be wrong and I, I ate multiple helpings of the crow but yeah because i just i just didn't think so so because of that i i'm still sort of never say never but yeah you know, yeah just curious as to your take yeah okay. but but let me put it this way i see nothing on the horizon not that i could say anyways <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. but i'd see nothing on the horizon giving mm-hmm. hope that that yeah. will that we'll ever see them mm-hmm. so unfortunately mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Um, all right. Well, you know, we do, you know, we've got to start wrapping up because I got to get to bed. But uh, before we completely do, like, is there something, you know, uh, the two of you, your collaboration as friends for, God, 30 years now, um, highlights of, of, of the two of you working together that you'd like to share with our listeners and preferably something on one of the DC films? Well, I would just say it's been an honor to have been involved with so many projects with Richard on so many projects. It's been an honor to be, to have been involved with so many projects with Richard. Uh, I would say it's hard because we had great moments. I mean, Rich was in Fight Club with me (laughs) (laughs) and everything else. Uh, 300 was an amazing journey and so glad to have him on that and Watchmen and Sucker Punch and Man of Steel and BBS was amazing and Justice League and Army of the Dead but I think I would go back personally to the Martha Rescue and Batman vs. Superman as probably the most that or the uh, 
nightmare sequence. <laughs> it was 140 outside, and Rich hadn't slept in two days. But that's another story. Uh, no, but just BVS was something. There was something really special about Batman versus Superman, and the first time he got in the suit, and you know, it's just it was it was an amazing experience. <laughs> I, I bet I had that Frank Drevin look on my face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I, I feel the same way, absolutely. And it's, it's been so nice to, to, to go through this journey with one of my best friends and, and a human being that I, I, I just enjoy being around immensely. And I'm so, so fortunate, really. Um, and we, and you know, you, like you said before, we talk about this a lot on films, bring it up and how fortunate we are to be doing what we're doing and to be, be doing it with, with, you know, us together as friends and then other friends that we have as well that are, you know, that we're close to. And it's just, just so lucky, you know, and uh, so it's been, uh, it's been really great. It, it's been amazing. And, and, and I would say, I would agree with you. I think BVS was probably, probably my, my favorite uh my favorite job for us working together. They've all been great, though. Yeah, it's hard to choose, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. You know, it was. Yeah, three three hundred was an, another one too because you know it was. Uh, we did you know I did a little bit on Dawn of the Dead, you know when you guys came back to L.A. I worked on that, but that was like the three hundred was the first one that I actually did a, you know the full the full feature. Um, with you and, and Zach, and so that's a special one too for me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's been amazing. It's just just been really incredible. And Army Army was fantastic too because it was it was nice, you know, because it was, uh, Justice League was tough. That was a tough show to go through, and then and then the reshoots were really tough. You know, uh, I I don't know if DJ told you, but. Damon, but we, 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 you know, we are just constantly looking at each other, just shaking our heads during the, you know, the, the Joss days out in the UK. And it was just, that was very, very difficult for us. And to get back to Army and back to the things, the way things always have been and, and that, that whole positive vibe and, and, you know, everybody just enjoying what we're doing, it, it, that was really cool. So that was, that was pretty special too. Mm-hmm. You read. Well, that's great. So what, I mean, it's not DC, but in a lot of ways, Army of the Dead feels like a comic book movie in the best possible way. So um, what can we look forward to with that uh, as that's coming our way next? Get to look forward to Rich Citrone as the lead, <laughs> the lead character again. Hell yeah. Oh, Big it goes Daddy. to Mars. <laughs> Big Daddy Mars is back. <laughs> been waiting so long uh, you don't know you don't know how many times on set <laughs> and 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 god forbid you have you have uh you have damon and zach battling <laughs> battling you <laughs> and and making fun of certain things and because them that together they're they're both comedy geniuses you know and <laughs> oh my gosh they, we, we we just made so many jokes on that film you know i, I mean Nothing against Ghost of Mars. It was it was an honor to work with John Carpenter. He was amazing. But it was one of my, you know, it was t 20, 20 years ago. You know, so I learned a lot since then, and I made I made some mistakes with that character that I I didn't want to duplicate. You know, and I was concerned about him, and I, I raised those concerns to Zach, and so it became a a, a sore spot kind of, and they, and they just and they just attacked me with it, and all in good fun. You know, but there was oh, it was hilarious. Some of the some of the laughs we had on set with that stuff. That's awesome. I love that it's lived on. I think that's great, <laughs> in one way or the other. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. big big Daddy Mars, I love it. Hell yeah! And the weird thing was, we were we were back in New Mexico where we shot big <laughs> Ghost <Right>. of Mars. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We came home to get the energy. <laughs> I hope it worked. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. It, it, it. Uh, I actually haven't. Normally in non-COVID times, I, I see, all the movies, early on. But I have not seen Army, and I'm super excited to, to see it. 
you know, the hope was just to go back to a simpler time. Um, I'm a huge fan of the zombie genre and Ramiro films and, you know, many cents um, as is Zach. And, you know, we just kind of wanted to dive back into that world and hopefully revitalize it because it's there's been a lot of redundancy in it lately, in, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. So that is the hope, just to go embrace and, and maybe add some new elements, perhaps. We'll see. Awesome. Well, I can't wait. And it does feel like a nice little like a sampler of all you know of a lot of a lot of what you guys have done so well in the past like in a in a cool new package because like i said it has a little bit of the comic book vibe but obviously there's some dawn of the dead in there there's a little bit of you know suicide squad type thing in there which i know wasn't zach's but still like that flavor and i don't know it looks looks fun as hell yeah yeah it 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 certainly should be that was the hope cool um, all right. Well, we will wrap it up. I could I could pick your brain forever, but it's late here, and we <laughs> and uh, you got to go get along with your uh, the rest of your weekend. So I I can't thank you enough for your patience and for making yourself available and taking the time to talk. Uh, it's certainly appreciated. And again, um, sending uh, sending regards from both Brendan and Jamie, who both wish they could have joined. But hopefully, you know, maybe we can do this another time when they are available. Because again, I, I mean, I don't know if we barely scratched the surface, uh, considering how much you guys have done. So thank you again. And I, I mean it when I say that, uh, you Damon, and then your partnership with Zach and with Richard here, you guys have really created some epic and magical movie magic, uh, over the past God, you know, well, if, if, we're, if we're talking just DC films since, you know, since 300 and Watchmen, but I mean, your whole collaboration ever since. And uh, as a huge Batman fan, you know, kudos to bringing Batman to life on film in a way that we had never seen, in a way that was distinctly uh, yours and your teams. And uh, it's something that many of us love, many of us cherish. And so I hope you know your hard work has paid off and is appreciated by millions. Well, I'm very honored, and, and like we all are, and uh, you know we do hear the, the very positive feedback from the fans, and that makes it all worthwhile. Um, not that we wouldn't do it anyways, because <laughs> we love. We're ultimately trying to make something we love, but uh, mm-hmm. the fact that mm-hmm. others share share our joy in it uh, makes it all worthwhile for sure. Very cool. Um, I don't know if you if you really are active on social media or Twitter or Instagram or anything anywhere that people could find you or follow you. Anything you want to plug? I'm not. I'm a dinosaur. Okay. If you want to get Nothing a hold of me? That. Contact That's Rich. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm a dinosaur. Um, yeah, um, in that world. That's someday okay. maybe, but I'm gonna wait till it all collapses and then I'll go on. No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> not, nothing yet. I. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I'm, I'm, I pop up every once in a while for an interview, um, and, and that's, that's that. But, uh, you know, if you get all of me, contact Rich. <laughs> <laughs> bother, uh. bother Richard for it. <laughs> that's Richard fine. For it. Um, or just wait for the next, the next movie, keep an eye on the IMDb page, and then they can just follow you that way. They can just support your work. Yep, and it's greatly appreciated. Love the support. Really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Very cool. Well, Richard, thank you again for joining us. Always great to have you back. Thanks for being my wingman tonight. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was a, it was a lot of fun. and uh, Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It's always fun to come on here. Sweet. And I hope, um, I, hope I, can, uh, I can come in and guest, guest host and interview Rich sometime with you. <laughs> 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 you're both always welcome the door the door is always open for you both lovely thank you andy the door is always open for you both thank you very much it was an absolute pleasure doing your show thanks very much oh well well no it was the pleasure was all mine and, and i certainly do appreciate it um richard tell our listeners in case they don't already follow you where they can follow you uh if you want to follow me on instagram i'm, I'm on there as stunt underscore batman and um yeah sweet Yep, give Richard a follow, and uh, yeah, just watch Damon's work. Watch BVS tonight in honor of him. 
Um, but that's where we are going to wrap this up. Uh, we will do the Wayne Manor mailbox next time. Uh, good news, there's not really much in it right now, so it's nice and quiet. So if you've got a message for the Wayne Manor mailbox, you can send that to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. Um, that'll do it. Um, make sure you go to holybatcast.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, Holy Batcast. Um, so on behalf of Damon and Richard, I've been Andy. We'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. He wanted your life for hers. She's losing time. The scout ship seems to be drawing power from the city. It's gotta be Lex. I need you that ship. I'll find her. My mother needs me. Wait. I'll make you a promise. Martha won't die tonight.